I'm Simon Lin from the University of Waterloo, and I study the effects of wildfires on water quality. As a natural filtration mechanism, forests often provide high quality water to major cities around the world. And as such, protection of these forests is essential to water security. Wildfires have increased over recent decades as a result of two main factors. The first is climate warming, which increases atmospheric evaporation and creates longer dry seasons each year. The second factor stems from a history of continual wildfire suppression, which results in the accumulation of large fuel loads that exist today. The combination of these two factors places regions like Southern California at risk of unprecedented disaster scale wildfire regimes. Of the various wildfire impacts, changes in water quality have so far been observed, but poorly characterized. Water quality can actually be compromised in a variety of ways, given elevated concentrations of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and suspended solids. Increases in turbidity, solids, and nutrient exports downstream pose a risk of overwhelming the treatment plants that supply our water. Since these issues reach our reservoirs by stream flow, changes in the flow regime after a wildfire are also an important consideration. Our objective was to quantify changes in these parameter concentrations after a wildfire using a meta-analysis of observations recorded by published studies. After a thorough literature review, water quality data was extracted from 45 out of 130 studies. Most of these sites resided in Australia and Western North America. Although their methods varied slightly, periods before and after disturbances such as fire and logging can be defined for each site using their recorded disturbance dates. By aggregating the data into these distinct periods, a representative statistic can be calculated for each period along the study timeline. Changes in concentration can then be determined by comparing the statistics between periods for the same site or between a burned site and a control site. To calculate the actual change for each parameter, we divide the mean concentrations of burned sites by the mean of corresponding reference concentrations to produce what we call a change ratio, where values greater than one signify an increase in concentration, values less than one indicate a decrease, and values equal to one indicate no change. When we aggregate all of these change ratios across all 45 studies by parameter, we see this final box plot here that tells us wildfires result in elevated concentrations for all of our parameters with nitrate, phosphorus, and suspended solids having the highest median increase. From here, we then plotted these change ratios by year to assess the long-term impacts of wildfires on water quality. We found that initially elevated concentrations tend to decrease from towards background levels over time, and that this was most apparent for nitrogen species as seen in our plot for nitrate. Conversely, soluble reactive phosphorus, or SRP, was seen to recover at the slowest rate. We also noticed that measurements often terminated within five years following a wildfire event, by which elevated concentrations sometimes return to background levels, as seen in our plot for dissolved organic carbon. With the currently available data, this meta-analysis presents a few key findings. Despite a few instances where concentrations decreased, wildfires generally elevate concentrations of nitrate, phosphorus, and suspended solids in affected streams. Elevated levels of SRP during the initial post-fire period supplies more bioavailable phosphorus for aquatic ecosystems, which could have implications for the development and impact of algae blooms downstream. Lastly, the short time span of post-wildfire water quality monitoring programs typically leave uncertainties around the true end state of these apparent recovery patterns that we're seeing in our meta-analysis. To resolve this uncertainty moving forward, future work will require co-sampling of water quality and stream flow for extended durations beyond five years following a wildfire. This will provide sufficient data for researchers to quantify concentration discharge relationships and better characterize the water quality response. With this new information, further work can then be done to quantify the influence of fire characteristics, such as burn intensity, severity, and burn extent, along with landscape variables, such as soils, slope, and vegetation type. In turn, all of this can help inform our best management practices for the source water protection programs that serve to maintain our water security in this new era of wildfire regimes. Thank you.